There are many so-called multivibrator circuits on the World Wide Web and also on YouTube and in electronics books etc etc. So uh, this is in fact not a very new schematic and I have published on my YouTube channel many multivibrator circuits with all their properties etc etc. So when you want to know more go to my channel trailer Radio Fun 232 on YouTube, uh, go to the looking glass and type in uh, keywords like multivibrator, A stable multivibrator, etc. Non stable multivibrator. There are different types, but this is a free running A stable multivibrator. One of the issues with these circuits is that. They often don't, often, sometimes don't want to start. Uh, there's also a video on my YouTube channel about that problem. Uh, the cure was, as far as I can remember, lift up the uh, resistor here. Say, now it's 10K, lift it up to uh, perhaps 50K or 100K, so that there is a kind of unbalance in, uh, in the circuit when it receives its supply voltage. That's the key issue. Uh, there must be a kind of unbalance in that circuit when you uh, add the supply voltage that makes that there's noise, the noise is amplified uh, in a first stage of oscillation and then uh, due to the unbalance it starts anyway. This is more or less the always working circuit. I hope it's visible from this distance. Here is the circuit in real. Made with a BC547 and a BD139. And the aim of this uh, circuit is that I want to drive a this transformer via a Darlington or whatever, this Darlington for instance, and I want to drive this transformer, a reversed main transformer, to make a high voltage, but then in the frequency range of 16 kilo cycles up to approximately 25 kilo cycles. And I'm absolutely not sure that this will succeed because this transformer is not made for such a high frequency. Though in the past I've made this <laughs> circuit, this circuit here, and I have driven with it such a classic uh, 230 volt 50 hertz transformer, and I even got it working. Um, then I mounted on the secondary of that transformer a rectifier and I have supplied a tube circuit with it and it worked properly. So that's the aim of this video. In fact, uh, often the waveform is sometimes critical, but uh, it can also be not very critical. And then I mean uh, there could be filtering on the secondary of such a transformer to filter out noise. And then especially when you want to use um, the circuit uh, in its final stage, by the way, to drive such a high voltage reversed main transformer. So that's what I wanted to tell um, the schematic again so that clear during the video that you have an overview. Here is the schematic. Also when you want to make it in real, this is how to do it. The pin connections etc. The green things are the capacitors. Here is the output capacitor. Of course, that output capacitor plays a role in how the value of that capacitor in how fierce a Darlington can be driven 
for a high voltage transformer anyway. Pan over somewhat. This capacitor adds stability. It can take away some peaks in the output voltage. Peaks that can cause uh, distortion, especially when you want to make the circuit that is my aim, a high voltage circuit to supply a tube. One tube or so. Uh, not too much tubes. Uh, such a transformer can, for instance, give out, say, four watts or so. That means that the end current that is uh, generated on the secondary is limited anyway. Uh, amplification factor of the BC547 very important. I tested them before I soldered them in, in the circuit. And when you are not acquainted to all these say strange names for N7, what does it mean? That's 4700 picofarad. 1k means 1000 ohms, 10k means 10,000 ohms, and 0 0.1 microfarad is exactly the same, a capacitor of that value, uh, of a 100 nanofarad capacitor. So let's look what this circuit can bring. Take some distance. Now it's on 14 kilohertz, and here you see the waveform. The frequency directly is related to the supply voltage. That's important to tell. It's one of the uh, properties of the A stable multivibrator when you make it in this way, in this simple way that uh, there's a direct relation between the frequency that it generates and the supply voltage and now it is on 9.5 volts. So I will lift up the voltage now to 12 volt. The circuit starts to work, that's important to tell, on 9.5 volts. Let's go to a lower voltage. Here it is 4.5 volts, 14 kilohertz. Here it is 9 volts approximately. One moment, please. 9 volts, 14 kilohertz. Here it is 12 volts, 12.4 volts, 15 kilohertz. This is 14.5. 1 volt, 17 kilohertz, 18 volts, also more or less standard value in electronics, 18 volts, 21 kilohertz, and say 24 volts, also a standard voltage in electronics, and that's the highest, the highest uh, voltage that is usable for this circuit. 26 kilohertz. So a good usable circuit in my opinion that can be used to driven all kinds of other electronic circuits via a Darlington for instance, such a high voltage transformer etc etc. And let's look again to the waveform. It's not a perfect square wave. I don't pay too much attention to that. When you want to know more, go to my YouTube channel, search uh, with the keyword multi vibrator, generator, etc. etc. There are many circuits about that on my YouTube channel. Um, well, it's a good circuit. It always starts to work. Let me demonstrate that. And of course, the best demonstration is to show that it works when you have a low voltage. Say we have 6 volts here, so 5 volts now. And when I tip, connect the voltage to it, let's see if it starts. And it does that. So 5 volts, it always starts. And that's the reason why I have called this 
an A stable multi vibrator that always works. Uh, uh, when you study that A stable multi vibrator circuit on the World Wide Web, in electronics books, etc., etc., you will surely find find that you can change the freq output frequency by changing these two capacitors. Say, take 100 nanofarad, then you are on a much lower frequency. You can also change this resistor, though it is somewhat critical, and th this resistor also responsible for the frequency, say these two elements, this resistor, that re resistor, this capacitor and that capacitor are the time dependent elements. Do some experiments. You can surely learn a lot from it. Thanks for watching.